Kitty. 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 No kitty. <laughs> Jump down, Archie. Come on, buddy. Go ahead. Go Let ahead. Help you. <laughs> Thank you, Cal. Hi everyone, I'm Claire Saffitz. Welcome to my home kitchen. Today I have a recipe that I created for you with Mother's Day in mind. This is my strawberry ricotta scones. It's easy, it's fun, it's delicious, and it's perfect for spring. My problem with scones, it's not actually with scones itself, it's with the version of scones that you see most often in, you know, like cafes. They just tend to be dense and leaden and not that flavorful and I'm just something, I, I don't see the point of eating it. But actually when you make scones at home, you can eat them fresh even when they're still warm and those are fantastic. So I kind of put it in the category of like baguette, and um, croissants where it's like you really want to eat them as fresh as possible. So there's a couple tricks you can incorporate at home to make them super light and delicious and that's what I'm going to show you. So this recipe is kind of inspired by two pastry chefs I've admired for a long time. The first is Nicole Rucker. She's based in LA. She has a book called Dabbled which is all about baking with fruit and in the book she has a recipe for ricotta biscuits that incorporates like strained ricotta into the biscuit dough and it just makes them so tender and delicious. And I love ricotta, so I thought that was a great idea. And then the other pastry chef is Claudia Fleming, who's based in New York, someone I've admired for my entire career. And she developed a recipe for a strawberry scone at Daily Provisions, which is a fantastic bakery in the city. And so I'm kind of incorporating some of those elements into this. And I just think it's a really perfect spring recipe and obviously like great for brunch and therefore perfect for Mother's Day. So let's talk about the ingredients. The base of this recipe is actually cake flour rather than, than all purpose. You could use all purpose and it would be fine, but I'm using cake because it's a lower protein content. There's gonna be less gluten development and this is gonna help produce a really, really light scone. So I have all purpose flour, one cup of full fat buttermilk, chilled, one stick of unsalted butter cut into half inch pieces, also chilled, three quarters of a cup of strained ricotta, I'll talk about how much you should strain it, a quarter cup granulated sugar, some demerara sugar, and then baking powder, baking soda, and kosher salt. Here I have 12 ounces of ripe strawberries that I chopped up, and then I threw them in the oven on a lined baking sheet at 250 degrees for about an hour. And that was to dry them out, and they're already soft, so I didn't really wanna bite into a scone and have like an uncooked piece of strawberry in there. These have cooled. You don't really need any special equipment. You'll need a baking sheet for baking the scones. I just have a bowl here that I'm gonna assemble it in. I'm gonna do the whole thing by hand and you'll need a rolling pin. First thing I'm gonna do, and it's important that all of your ingredients are cold. If you're working in a warm kitchen, I actually recommend you can chill the flour and I would keep both your buttermilk and the butter in the fridge until you're ready to use them. So the first thing I'm gonna do is whisk together my dry ingredients plus the sugar. So I'm adding a quarter cup of sugar to my dough. Then I have two teaspoons of baking powder. So generally scones and biscuits use a, a pretty high amount of what we call chemical leavener, that baking powder, baking soda, in order to give it some, some rise and some lift. Then a teaspoon of baking soda. We are putting these together with buttermilk, which is an acidic ingredient. So that baking soda is gonna react with the acid in the buttermilk, and then I have the baking powder, which is gonna give it further lift in the oven. Then just a little bit of kosher salt. This demerara sugar is for sprinkling over top, so I'm gonna move it over here. I have a cup of buttermilk. I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna use all of that liquid, but just make sure that you have a little bit of extra buttermilk because I'm gonna use that to brush over the top of the scones. What's the deal with buttermilk? I mentioned earlier that this is full fat buttermilk. It's kind of a, a misnomer because buttermilk by definition is the liquid that's left over after making butter, so the fat's been removed, so it's pretty low fat. But that's generally not the kind of buttermilk you find in stores. It's just like a cultured milk, basically. So I have that. It makes a really tender, delicious biscuit or scone. All right, I have my one cup of butter that I cut into half inch cubes. I'm gonna add this to my bowl. And the first thing I'm gonna do is separate all of those pieces of butter. The cubes break down the butter into this sort of correct size for smashing, which is kind of the next step. So I have all those cubes separated and I'm just gonna toss them in the flour to coat. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my fingertips, just my thumbs and my pointer fingers and middle fingers, and I'm gonna just smash them and I wanna flatten them into like little thin sheets. So I'm gonna smash them like that so that they thin out. 
And I'm not working the butter into the flour. Like I'm not, it's not disappearing into the flour. And if it's warm, that's what's gonna happen. So you definitely wanna do this with cold butter. You don't wanna do it with butter that's so cold that it's gonna like um, shatter as you smash it. So you can freeze it briefly, but don't freeze it solid. The butter is adding flavor, it's adding richness, and it's also adding tenderness. So it's good to have different size pieces of butter. Some of it can be a little bit more finely broken down. Some of it you can leave really large, but this is gonna create a flaky texture in the scones. If you wanted to, you, at this stage, you could add something to flavor it. You could add like a little cinnamon to the dough. You could add, if you like the idea of like an herb with your strawberries, you could add like a little fresh thyme leaves or that kind of thing. That's a nice thing to incorporate into the dough, but I'm just kind of leaving it plain. And you also wanna work quickly because you don't want this mixture to get too warm. Your hands are obviously warm, so those are gonna sort of cause the mixture to warm up a little bit. So try to work quickly. So now I created a little bit of a well in the center. I'm gonna pour in most of my buttermilk, but reserve a couple tablespoons. So I did the well just to basically keep the sides of the bowl really clean. So I know I'm yeah, like the only thing that's touching the buttermilk is the flour. I wanna work this in with the fork until the mixture is kind of shaggy and crumbly. So this looks good. And I'm using a fork because if you were to mix by hand at this stage, your hands get full of buttermilk and then the flour sticks to it. So it's sort of a little messy. And now I'm going to work in my ricotta. So this is ricotta just from the grocery store. It's whole milk ricotta. And I took it and I put it into a mesh strainer and set it over a bowl and threw it in the fridge for a couple hours. So it had a chance to drain a little bit. It probably released, I would say, three to four tablespoons of liquid. So that's just to tighten it up a little bit. And what I'm gonna do with this is just kind of crumble it into the bowl. How did you release the liquid? It just released it on its own. Like you just put it on a paper towel or something? I put it over a bowl, set, set it on, in a mesh strainer over a bowl. And then inside the bowl, it just kind of collected. Like as if you were making cheese? Yeah, if you're straining yogurt or anything like that. So I'm just crumbling in the ricotta. And what happens is as we form the biscuits, which I'll show you kind of in the next couple steps, this kind of like works its way into the, into the dough. Again, this is a technique from the pastry chef Nicole Rucker. It's just so genius. It's something about the mixture of the ricotta plus the cake flour that just makes the scones so, so tender. So here I have this mixture. I held back some of the buttermilk because the ricotta is gonna contribute its own moisture to the dough and will help bring it together. So I'm gonna reserve this for brushing over the tops of the scones. And now I wanna get this onto my work surface. So I'm gonna grab a rolling pin, a bowl scraper, and a little bit of extra flour for the bench. I'm gonna put down a little bit of flour on the bottom. The mixture still has some unincorporated flour, so it shouldn't be too sticky, but I expect it to be sticky in pockets, like where that ricotta is. We made scones one other time on dessert person. It was with Natasha, and we did a savory, like zu cheesy zucchini scone, which was so good, and that was partly what convinced me that I actually maybe like scones. And she has this technique where she is helping to distribute all the liquid by just kind of like pulling up the mixture and letting it fall through her fingers. So this is gonna help incorporate a lot of these floury bits and it's not gonna overwork the dough. So you just kind of wanna lift everything up. If you have any big bits, like big pieces of ricotta, you can kind of break them up. This is looking good. I can tell that this is gonna be kind of just the right amount of moisture. Archie. Once you have these sort of big, like moist clumps, you can start to bring it together. So I'm going to take everything and pat it together into a square or rectangle. There's a lot of ways that you can kind of achieve a really flaky scone, biscuit, whatever, which is sort of a type of lamination, which lamination refers to this kind of folding of dough, like interspersed with butter, so you get all these layers. There's a couple different ways to do it. With biscuit making, often you see rolling out and then like a letter fold into thirds, or you can just actually like cut it and stack pieces, which is I think what I'm gonna do. In baking, there's almost always more than one way to get from point A to point B. So we're trying to achieve a flaky, tender result, and like there's a couple of different techniques that you can use to get there. I was thinking that I would fold, but now that I'm here, I might stack. So I can see the bits of butter, I can see the streaks of ricotta, it looks so good. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll this out a little bit so it's even and a little bit flatter. I can give it a tiny bit of flour, just so the rolling pin doesn't stick to the dough anywhere. If you see the dough start to crack in places, that probably means it's underhydrated some areas and maybe overhydrated in others. You don't have to worry too much because this method is going to even out the hydration and bring it all together. So you can just kind of squeeze it back together. And the important thing is that it stays somewhat in a rectangle or square. The dimensions don't matter. You just want it about like a half inch thick. So I'm gonna go a little bit flatter. And you can roll in one direction or the other, it doesn't matter. You just sort of want square sides. 
And if you start to see it round a little bit, it's not that really that important. You can just kind of push it back together. I did 12 ounces of strawberries. I probably won't use them all, but we'll kind of see what looks right. Now, let's talk about why I baked them at a low temp. I really was somewhere between roasting and dehydrating them. So 250 is pretty low. They didn't really get any color on them. What happened was they gave off a lot of their moisture and they kind of have the texture somewhere between a fresh strawberry and a dried strawberry. So the flavors have become really concentrated. They're still juicy, but the important thing is that they're not gonna give off a ton of moisture in the oven as they bake. I am going to take the strawberries and scatter them across half of the dough. Maybe about a third of the strawberries. Then I'm gonna take my bench scraper, I'm gonna cut it in half. Now I'm gonna use that scraper to lift up this half a dough and place it on top of the first. So I'm enclosing these strawberries inside the dough. If you have any little flowery bits, go ahead, scoop those up and you can just tuck them in. I like to just kind of literally stick them in between the layers of dough. Basically what I did was I took the dough, rolled it out, then I stacked it. Now by stacking it, I'm doubling the layers of butter. So that's gonna give me something really flaky. And now I wanna just repeat that one more time. So I'm gonna give it a little more flour. And this stacking is also really gonna to help to even out the hydration of the dough. So if you have some drier areas and some wetter areas, they all kind of even out. So get under there with your scraper. You can toss a little flour under there. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a turn. If you feel like it's getting too soft to handle, go ahead and just transfer this whole thing to a lined sheet tray and throw it in the fridge. And I would say rest it for 10 minutes or so and then you can proceed. But I'm doing okay here, it's still pretty cool to the touch. So a little more flour on top. I'm gonna roll this out one more time. This time flattening it more to, I would say like three quarters of an inch. Those sheets of butter and those pockets of ricotta are kind of flattening out. It's just gonna make such, these, such delicious little pockets of these ingredients. So now I'm gonna take more strawberries and just repeat the same thing on one side of the dough. So now, exact same thing as before. I'm gonna cut the dough in half, take the top half, lift it up, set it over the strawberries. Give everything a nice pat so we can kind of square off the edges and the sides. And now I have this nice bundle of dough that's about an inch and a half thick. And now I'm just gonna roll it out a little bit more and we're gonna form the scones. So I'm just kind of patting and tucking and evening out the thickness. So now I'm gonna roll it out to sort of a square shape. And that's gonna help me cut, I'm gonna do eight scones from this quantity. Now before I form them, I think at this stage is probably when I wanna cut them. If your dough is feeling nice and cool and firm, you can go ahead and form the scones now. But I think what I'm gonna do is chill it then I'll cut the scones and we'll bake. So I'm gonna get this onto a baking sheet with some parchment paper. When you're making anything with a high butter content, so like, you know, certain kinds of cookies, pie dough, other pastry, scones, that kind of thing, it's better to bake on parchment rather than a silicone baking sheet because on silicone, things tend to spread a lot. And I don't want my scones to really spread. I want them to like rise upward rather than kind of flatten out. So I'm gonna use parchment. I'm just gonna lift this up onto my baking sheet. Get everything patted together. And I'm actually gonna stick this in the freezer. So I want everything to firm up really, really well. The colder it is, the nicer cuts I'm gonna get and the better layer flakiness I'm gonna have. So into the freezer. And then while that's chilling, I would say for like 20 minutes, I'm gonna get my oven preheating to 425. While the dough is soft, I'm actually just taking those leftover strawberries and just sort of pressing some into the surface. I think it's gonna look pretty. I like when you can see from the top like what the flavor is gonna be. I hope they don't burn. We'll see. This is not from the book. This is just kind of my own experimentation and kind of pulling from recipes that I admire and have made before. I would say these have been chilling for 20 minutes. My oven just beeped, so it's preheated. I pulled these from the freezer. I'm ready to cut them. Generally, scones are cut into triangles, so that's what I'm gonna do. And for a slab this size, which is about seven by seven, I like to go into quarters in half 
both directions and then each of the little squares into in half so to get eight to the touch I can feel the pastry is nice and cold and it's gonna slice nice and clean so I did it in half and then I'm gonna cut each square in half again but diagonally so now I have eight triangles I'm gonna use that tablespoon or two of buttermilk left over and I'm gonna brush this tops and then they're gonna get a sprinkle of my demerara sugar. Obviously I'm using buttermilk on the tops of these because buttermilk was my like binding, my liquid ingredient, but whatever the liquid is, I'll use that for brushing on top. So if it's cream scones or cream biscuits, I'll use the cream. Sometimes I'll just use melted butter since there's already butter in the dough. So I used pretty much all of that buttermilk. Did you ever do an egg wash? I generally don't do egg wash on biscuits or scones. Um, okay, but I do like to sprinkle sugar on top, especially well, in the context of a sweet scone like this, for sure. So I have some demerara sugar, turbinado. It's kind of used interchangeably, and I'm just going to sprinkle this over the surface. I like the crunch quite a bit. So that was probably a tablespoon or two. And now I am going to separate my scones. I love how you see those pockets of strawberries that have been kind of like laminated or, or layered into the dough. Cute little scone. They do want to have like a nice amount of space around them so that the air can circulate so they can get nice and golden brown all over. So I'm gonna get these onto my baking sheet. So I have my oven on 425. I started pretty hot because I wanna give a blast of heat. Initially, that's gonna initiate kind of puffing of the layers. I'm gonna get that nice separation. But then as soon as it goes in, I'm gonna turn it down to 400 and let it go a little bit lower so it can cause time to bake all the way through. But these look great. So in at 425, I'm gonna turn the temp down to 400. So the scones have been in just over 25 minutes. The surface is golden brown. The strawberries have gotten like this crackly sugar topping and they look so good, they smell amazing. I'm gonna pull them out. They smell so good. I love that they puffed really nicely. They didn't spread too much. They got nice and tall. I think it's best to serve the scones warm. So I wanna let them cool for you know, maybe 15, 20 minutes, and then we can break into them. Yeah, they should be eaten fresh. You know what I would do? I would take some ricotta and some butter and whip it and serve it with this. Be delicious. <music> 20 minutes, you'd say? These have been cooling? Yeah. They've been just sitting on the rack, and when I pick one up, it's just a little bit warm on the bottom. So that's what I want. Everything still needs a chance to kind of set. There's like a crumb in there. I think that they got great height and volume. When I pick it up and I feel it, it feels fairly light for its size. So it's like, I know it's not super dense and just heavy. I'm so glad we use that cake flour because it's just gonna produce something so light. And I'm really excited to kind of peek in there and look at some of those pockets of ricotta and the little flaky layers from all the butter. But I love how they turned out. The strawberry slices that I put on top got really sugary and like a little bit dried out. I know they're gonna be candy-like, so I'm just super excited to eat these. I love seeing the strawberries like in all the layers kind of peeking out too. It just looks super appealing. Ooh, I'm gonna taste it. Mmm, mmm. Only very lightly sweet. I didn't even add any sugar to the strawberry, so the only sugar in there is the quarter cup of granulated and what I sprinkled on top would be great with like some strawberry jam, a delightful, perfect brunch pastry, especially for spring. Also, mmm, mmm. I love the kind of crunchiness on top. So tasty, oh my God. And I love how not sweet it is and how much it would welcome like a little bit of strawberry jelly on there. Well, this is actually a fantastic use for overripe strawberries. So if you like bring home too many from the farmer's market, Cut them up, get them in the oven, and they sort of dehydrate, so it preserves them a little bit. And what you'll end up with is like a really intense strawberry flavor. So just so, so good. And actually, by the same token, it's also kind of a great use for not great strawberries because you are concentrating those flavors. So either way, sort of like the perfect spring 
breakfast pastry. I hope you make it for Mother's Day if you have someone to celebrate or maybe just for yourself because they're so fun and quick and easy. So thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. I think I like scones now. These I can get behind. Super tasty.